This is Kevin Cassis Rifle Team and Association Matkins in Marbella. We're in Cologne here for the second press conference for the rematch between Tyson Fury and Vladimir Klitschko. With me I've got Peter Fury. Professional outfit today, wasn't it? Very good. Like I said, one of the best I've been to. You know, first class service. You know, look at the food that's laid on. Everything, there's everything here. Private rooms to sit in. I think they put us to shame with the press conferences. This is, uh, this is really something else, this is. We had the boots good too. <laughs> yeah. When does the diet start? Next week. Monday. No, it starts when we leave here. <laughs> but, uh, so people can see what you're doing. It's a proper, uh, proper banquet for a uh, king and queen, this is. So, anyway, it's really impressive for a press conference. What about the actual press conference itself? <laughs> Um, you know, what, what can be said about it? Very low key in respect to yesterday, obviously. Yeah. I think yeah, when they're like 24 hours apart, what can you say today you've not said yesterday? Yeah. So it's, uh, I think it's one of them. But uh, anyway. I, was, I, was, I wasn't uh, under the impression that uh, you could hear what was being said in German from Klitschko. And oh yeah, I had a earpiece in. Yeah, I didn't know that. All three of you had one. I said never, I was just translating the odd bits and pieces to him. Oh. But me and uh, Mick had the translator in. So any particular things that we didn't know that was said in that press conference? No, I heard everything about the, the gay stuff and all that. And, um, you know, it's just uh, a lot of shit, really. I asked him earlier on whether it's like, it seems like old news now, but it's being brought up again, especially by the German press. They asked him questions about it earlier on in the round table. It's done with now. He's already said he hasn't got a phobia and it's all been took out of contact, so what more to be said on it? Mm. But Vlad keeps mentioning it, I don't know why, but maybe, maybe he's got some very close friends or whatever and he feels like they've been spoke wrongly about, I don't know. Whatever it is, anyway, it's no interest. Mm. Maybe Vlad's a batting man himself. Ever thought that? No, I haven't. Well, why are you struggling to speak then? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said something and then I wasn't sure what you said. Play it back, won't you? Um, talking gets done now. You can put your head down and ten long, hard weeks of training. Yeah, it's a long camp, but it's going to be an enjoyable camp because when you're in the training, you know you're watching the weight come off every week and you're seeing the progress. So there's always and the motivation when you come to these places. You know exactly what's in hand and what you've got to do. So nothing, you can't take anything for granted. But, I'm going to train uh, very, very hard. I know, what's, I know what needs to be done, so uh, we'll be doing it. Tyson said yesterday that Vladimir still doesn't know what to expect when, from Tyson when he gets in the ring with him July the 9th. Does he have any idea? I've always said, look, you know, when, you, when you've got a high skill set, you know, the other fighter can more or less bring what he's going to bring. You know, when, when these two fighters are on their A game, both of them, I don't believe Klitschko's got his A game is going to beat Tyson. That's what I do believe. I just think Tyson has got too much. He's 27, and one's coming to the twilights of his career, and one's starting it. You know, so when you look at all the history books and you go back, you know it's uh, it's going to be a tall order. And I've always said as well, Tyson's only ever going to beat himself. You know, so yeah, but what happens if I just want to retire and stop? Then you don't fight at all, you go home, pack your kit and forget about it. Well, let's, let me go home then. I want to pack my kit and go home. <laughs> that may, may be a solution, you might not even see the fight yet. <laughs> don't say that. We're trying to sell you some Box Nation, remember? <laughs> sure what? We're trying to sell you some Box Nation, remember? <laughs> yeah. Don't be saying shit like that. Uh, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm fucking sick of it all. What, what, what do you make of his attitude, Obviously, especially highlighted this week, that he just generally doesn't care what happens? Yeah, of course, come on. If he wins or loses. It's okay, just interrupt this interview, it's okay. It's He's fine. only an idiot. <laughs> Mom. Easy, fat boy. <laughs> Put in his foreign look. <laughs> easy, Jeremy, chunky. <laughs> <This is laughs> chunky, easy. Yeah, what about that attitude? So, what, what do you make of that, actually? If he means it. I'm going to say if, because I have to take a 
take it with a pinch of salt, everything that comes out of Tyson's mouth to the media. What you need to understand is, because he's like he is, he's where he is. He's always had that attitude anyway. Because when he's like he is, he's not, he's not nervous, he's relaxed in there. And to get the best of skill out of Tyson, that's what he needs. So it's all mind games as boxing. It is 90% mind games. Not mind games, but psychology. You know, you can get nervous, you can get tense, different things react to different people. He just sees boxing as what it is. He's very relaxed in what he does. So the main thing is when that bell goes, he will be switched off. We hope. <laughs> I'm fat, I'm bald, I'm ugly. I wouldn't have nothing done. I've not even had a wash this morning, I've not even had a shave. Look at the state of me. This is the heavyweight champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm a champion in recess. There's the heavyweight champion of the world there, looking fit as anything, in shape, with a nice suit on, snappy haircut, clean shave, smells good, the lot. This isn't the heavyweight champ, is it? Look, I've got a pair of shoes on. I don't know where these are going from, actually. These might be. Oh my God. I think these are the. I think these are the cleaners. Did he get you them? I've got someone's trousers on. I don't even get me. Yeah, look. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and that's it, really. But you're still heavyweight champion of the world. I am. But what does it mean? You tell me what it means. To be the heavyweight champ of the world. Um, a sense of honour? No, nope. there's no honour in being a champion at all. Prestige? Prestige comes with money. Status? Status comes with money. Role model? Role model. <laughs> I, I no, forget, forget about your personality. I'm on about people aspiring to be where you are. All, only about money. Okay. What else? All them things you said, all them things, are, people get all that when they've got a few quid. Don't mind. You're 30 million strong, aren't you? Take off 29 and a half million, yeah? yeah? And then take off tax and fat, and that's what I've got. Yeah. A couple of hundred grand, that's it. Finished. I ain't made any money out of boxing. That's why I'm still dressed like a tramp. Ask Mick Hennessy. Mick, here. Have I made any money out of boxing or not? <laughs> True, Paul. Yeah, big money. Have I? How much? <laughs> <laughs> how much have I made? Tell the public. It wouldn't matter how much you made. You'd still be the same person, dressed the same. I think well, that's true, say, actually. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but like Mix just said, yeah. If I had a hundred million, I'd still have these trainers on that stare and toes poking through them. Look. Who's, whose bottoms are they? Don't I don't know, I think they're Ewey's. Because I had travel XL, but now I've got double XL. So, it ain't about money. Because money can't make a slink into a posh man. As you can see with me. Once a slink, always a slink. If you've got class, money can't alter it. But if you've got no class, and you win the lottery, you're still a slink. That's what has happened to me. I've always been a slink. I won the lottery and I'm still asleep. So, Mick, is you sum that up right? About right, Mick, isn't it? You see the nail on the head, yeah. He's, he hasn't changed since the day turned pro. Was a slink then? I'm a slink now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barry. If you're a What you got in your other pocket? Nothing. Surprise, mystery. I know what I say we should all do. For the crack. Go on a lad's jolly outing in Cologne. Everyone get proper rat assed here in uh, Cologne and cause mayhem. All end up in the clink for the night. Are we agreeing to this? You up for missing the flight? Clink? Well, I can film it all, yes. I don't think they let cameras in where we go, Barry, would they? I don't think I want to go where, <laughs> wherever it is you're talking about. <laughs> Trust me, you would want to go. Oh, oh, oh. He's heading back to Holland now, yeah? Yeah. Alright, okay. Heading back to Holland and um, that's it. Nothing else. <laughs> what? Can we see what's in the air? Yeah, out of it.
Let's have a look what you've taken. <laughs> yeah, let, me have, right. let me have a look what you've taken. Go on. I haven't taken anything. <laughs> what? I'm my phone and my hand cream. <laughs> you got in there? Right, whatever I've got in there, now I'm not going to eat it, am I? Have you had your big fingers on it? <laughs> oh, no. Bubble gum hand gel. I'll have some of that. What else you got? That's it, really. Shall we make a move then? Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you. See you later. Cheers. Present. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.